The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13, 13, now abide faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. And the Bible certainly teaches us that. But there are two other great things, faith by which we are saved and hope by which we live. It's hard to live, to look forward, to find any satisfaction and fulfillment or enjoyment even in God if you don't have hope. Today I want to talk to you about how you can find hope and how important it is that you live within it. Hi, this is Robert Furrow and welcome to Hot Topics. The comment section is open below. We would love to hear from you. Years ago, there was a study done by a John Hopkins professor on rats. It's kind of a brutal experiment. He drowns rats to see what he can learn. The third experiment is the one that we are interested in. And before we get into the details of that, I want to give you five things the Bible tells us about hope. Listen to how powerful they are. The first one is that we have hope because of God's great promises. God is telling us the truth and he tells us of our future. And because of that, we can have hope. Listen to what it says in Romans 8, 24 and 25. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for him with perseverance. In other words, when we trust in Christ and the promises that he gives, then we have hope and we persevere in that hope. The second thing the Bible teaches us about hope is that faith and hope are connected. They are two great things. I think we could even say faith, hope, and love are connected. But in this passage, we learn that faith and hope are connected. Listen to what it says in Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So when you are trusting, when you have faith, when you believe, it is in things that you hope for. We hope for the promises God has given us, and then we have faith because we put our trust in that hope. The third thing the Bible teaches us is that God is the God of hope. Did you know that the Bible says that? If you are hopeless right now, turn to him to find that hope. Listen to what it says in Romans 15, 13. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy, peace in believing, that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, when you come to the God of hope and you surrender your life to him and you hear his promises, then you abound in hope. Finally, we learn something from a promise that was given to the nation of Israel that I believe we can rebuild from other passages that applies to us as well. Listen to what it says in Jeremiah 29, 11, God spoke this to the nation of Israel. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. No, I love the way that's said. And people love that verse. And oftentimes people will come in to rain on their parade. That's not the proper interpretation of that verse. That's a misinterpreted verse. But I think that we can build that God gives us a future. God gives us a hope when we put our lives and trust in him. Finally, we are given a command to rejoice in this hope. Remember, the promises are given. Now we are to rejoice in it. Even though life may be difficult and tough, we can still rejoice in the hope we're given. Listen to what it says in Romans 12, 12. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer. Now let's get back to that study on rats. You wouldn't think that you could learn about hope from rats, but there was a study done by a John Hopkins professor, and he did three different studies on rats drowning them, which again is a brutal experiment. But when he got to the third one, he decided to see what would happen if he rescued them. So he put a rat in, let it swim until it was ready to drown. He knew this because of all the rats he had drowned, brought it out, petted it, put it away, timed how long it took him to get to the point of exhaustion, put the next rat in, repeated that through several rats, then put the rats back in again. And now the rats swam 10 times longer than they did before. His conclusion, they had hope. Just having hope kept their head up, kept them persevering. If you are living in existence without hope now, come to the God of hope who has a future for you, who has a hope for you. He will make you abound in that hope. God bless you. We'll see you next time on Hot Topics.